Hi, I'm Lenora. I'm Kristen. Hello. I'm Isabel. Hola. Hi, I'm Kristen. I am a writer who most recently is the author of the novel The Age of the Child, in which a repeal of Roe versus Wade has unanticipated consequences that take a very surprising turn from one generation to the next. Hi, I'm Isabel. I'm the creator of The Uprising Spark and a coach for childhood women like myself who are struggling and want to work through their feelings of guilt, anger, or shame that can accompany our um, choice, basically. I'm also the host of the Honest Supper podcast, and I am the, I just came back from the first trip of all child for women from the Caribbean, I'm all tanned, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't named that yet, but hey, you want to come meet new friends? We're going to talk about friends today. <laughs> you haven't named your tan? I haven't named the trip, <laughs> trip thing. So <laughs> That's what I heard. I was like, you haven't named your tan. Okay. <laughs> what the? The way it was phrased, I was like, she was talking about her tan, so. And this is Tommy. Okay. <laughs> that, that's a nice name. <laughs> I'm going to do that again because this is not going up there. I don't know. I think it's funny. <laughs> okay. I love it. Don't get rid of it. Yeah. We did the boobies, oh, not babies fun. thing last week. So this week we have to do the naming of the tan. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> And then next week, it's your turn to laugh at me for something I said or something. I don't know. We got to do anyway, whatever. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Lenora Faye. I am a child-free lifestyle advocate. I am a co-founder and moderator for the 2022 virtual child-free convention that is happening in July. I am also the host of Child for Morning Chat on the Clubhouse audio app. And on Instagram, I host a weekly show called Boobies Not Babies over at Child Free Blog. And we are the three founding non-mothers of Child Free Girls. This episode, we're going to be discussing an email that we got asking about friendships, uh, finding friends who are child-free, and navigating through the child-free slash parent relationship. Uh, well, when your friends have kids, essentially. So we received an email uh, from someone who is 44, and she writes, I knew from a very young age that I didn't want to have children. As you can imagine, at my age, practically all my friends have had or are having kids. One of the things that is hard for me is mourning the loss of those friendships. I'm always the one to initiate a conversation or text. I'm always the one saying, hey, we should catch up and get together. And then ultimately, when we do, I regret it. The topic of our conversations are usually led by the mom and also always focus around her kids. I try to steer the conversation away from kid-related stuff to more generic or stuff that we can both relate to, but inevitably she takes over by bringing up her kids. I guess my question is twofold. How do you handle your friendships with mother friends and have you gone and how have you gone about making new child-free friends? So that is those are the two questions. We'll be tackling today. Okay. Um, so remember, I thought I wanted to have children. When my friends started having kids, I still thought I wanted that too. So um, every time a kid was born and they were overjoyed, I would like completely share the joy. And it was all, they would tell me about their sort of like mommy adventures with their, with their babies and what they were learning and the books they were reading before the baby, like so many books <laughs> before the baby was born and sort of like and when you have kids right this is gonna happen to you and you're gonna understand this better when you have kids and you this is like not what you can imagine right now just wait until you have kids but I because I thought I wanted children I was like I'm so glad that I have friends who are having children before me so that I can sort of learn from their experiences as well however I mean even even I mean I hadn't embraced the child we like then but even so I felt like I lost my friends it was very progressive in time as a kid was growing up um I just felt that they had less time for not for me particularly just in general for things that were not their children they were completely focused on their upbringing you no know, schooling and you know doctor things and food and everything that child needs to be able to grow to be able to flourish I guess so they have less time to spend with friends including me 
and if they had time to spend, I mean, and sometimes when we got together, it was usually at kids' parties or baby showers or, and of course, the whole talk revolved about around the baby, the kid growing up, you know, they're growing up, what is happening with one, what is happening with the other. And like I said, at the at the time, I just, I wasn't really worried about not connecting with my friends because I thought this is going to be me one day. And then when I embraced the chocolate lifestyle, that completely, it took a turn, like 180 for me. Like I just, now when I sit down with friends and I, they start talking about their children, like I can't, I can do it for a little bit. But if it's the topic for like the whole time that we're together, it's, I feel like I'm being ignored, I guess, in a way. Like, I understand you you have a need to talk about kids that are important to you. I get that. But at the same time, there's a lot of things going on in my life that are important to me. And I feel like there's no space for me to actually express myself in those spaces, right? Because it's always like, your things are not as important as our children. <laughs> like, look at her, the bachelorette and non mom is talking. Yada, yada, yada. So it's like, I'm not even taken seriously enough, I guess. So it's been very hard, I guess. I mean, for me, it's been hard to navigate that because I feel like I've lost a lot of friends. Uh, it's not like we just kind of like stopped talking and said, or said, we know we're not going to talk ever again. Like we just kind of grow apart. Um, but I think it's normal because I, I don't blame mothers whose topic of conversation, main topic of conversation is their kids. Like, I don't blame, I don't blame them. Because everything around us, you know, perennialist, this perennialist society and everything around us is telling mothers that they have to like be completely hyper-focused on their children. Whether that's good or bad, it's a whole different conversation, but they just kind of like, they have this need to be like good mothers, right? Quote, unquote, good mothers. Um, so I don't blame that they also feel, might feel pressured to be on top of everything so that they're seen as good mothers. Um, but at the same time, I wish that they would also realize that life is so much more. I mean, there were people before they were mothers, right? They had other interests, they had other passions. And now it's like, nope, I don't care about any of that. I'm a mom and that's like their whole identity. So it's hard. I find it interesting that you said, you know, once you embrace the child-free lifestyle, things change for you because when I think about it, that's how it was for me too. Even in my twenties, I knew that I didn't want to have kids. And, you know, I would have expressed that to certain friends who had children and there was never a back and forth dialogue about it. But I, in my twenties, I seemed to just roll with, okay, that's, that, that's where they're at. And, you know, I'd go, I would be the one to go visit them. It seemed like it was like both parties were initiating, you know, it's kind of like, okay, do you have time? Yes, I've got time. I was living, always living in a different town, but working in a, in a like commuting. So I was the one driving around to people's houses. And over time, people just expected that. So when I stopped doing that, and I was like, no, I've got my own place you can come over to. That's when it was, that's when I noticed, you know, things changed. So to the point of accommodating, I definitely was the one more accommodating, you know, their schedule and going to where they were located. But once I started talking about being child free. So flash forward another 10 years or so to like mid thirties and my priorities really shifted, not, not ag against parenthood, but it was just like, this is taking my time. This is where my passion is. This is where my interest is. And this is it, actually, when I think about it in my mid thirties, this is when I started to learn what kind of conversations I need, like what kind of quality of conversations I need. And then I realized, okay, so I'm, when there's children in the house, I, I also like talking to kids. So a lot of times I was discovering as the kids got older, I was not having more conversations, more interesting conversations with them because they've got ideas, you know? Um, but that's when I, I noticed a, definitely a, more of a, a, a shift in speaking less and less with my friends who have kids and I don't necessarily, it might be a time thing. I don't think it's a topic thing because no one's ever like said, this makes me uncomfortable that that's what you're doing. But it's, again, it comes down to the quality of conversation and the quality of conversation changes when, 
and and this this doesn't I don't mean to make it a bad thing, but it's just it's different because I, I I get it. Your brain is split into many different categories, and then when you have kids need you and you're interrupting the conversation, that's something I had to learn in my twenties is to be patient when we had a thought we're in the middle of something and then kids come and they need something, and I'd be like, okay, it's all right, Lenora, it's okay. Let you know we'll finish it. But I, I I would get like, oh, can't we just finish a thought? So you know, I it's. And also too, I want to say like, it, it depends. I think it depends on the kind of friendship. Cause I've never been a person that has made plans with people. I go off and do my own thing. Like I never make plans to travel with people. I never, I rarely make plans to go to anything in the city with people. I do it myself. Cause I like that. So, you know, if, if you are, if you have a group of friends where you guys are making plans and you're spending weekends together and I could see where that's a massive change. I've never been that kind of person. So I haven't noticed a drastic shift in social life that way because I just don't do that anyway. I, I do things on my own. The biggest change I knew was when my, I, I re- went through and the hardest one was my brother actually when he became a dad at 19 because we were living together. We shared, I, we never saw each other because we had very different schedules, but you know we had a place together and we were going to travel and do certain things. So that was the, where I was like, God, kids suck. <laughs> but then I just had his children in my house for the last week. So, you know, things are fine. <laughs> but that's that's my experience with the friendship, friends with parents thing. And then also when you're friends with guys, that's a whole other conversation because I feel this is conversations more geared towards when you're friends with women. Friends with men, different story. Not much change, to be honest. <laughs> so you didn't lose any friends when they had kids? Like it, it just no, became a no, different kind I, of friendship. Yeah, didn't lose friends. It's just kind of, you know, like I, I, I love my favorite friendships are the ones where if you don't talk for a couple of years and then you get together. Yeah, that's that's my thing. Um, that's what I like because we're all busy and and that just right. I I, I like if you're calling me every weekend, we're not going to be friends for very long, <laughs> unless we're working on something like Child for Girls. That's a different story. <laughs> But seriously, every single day, I know, I know, but that's, that's a completely different situation, <laughs> completely different situation. You have, you have to make it business related with me. If you're going to call me every weekend to talk about your problems, we're not going to be friends for very long, but it's okay to talk about the wedding veil. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hallmark movie is totally fine. I'm so glad I don't have Hallmark channel in my, oh, you're missing out. You're missing out. Isabel, like the, the, <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> I I think she's missing out. I mean the 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 I mean actually that series was actually pretty cute. I will say. They have gotten better. I have seen some Hallmark movies that I can't even that I can't even watch to fall asleep to because they're so boring. They frustrate me. Yeah. Like that's just weird. When it's so boring that I can't even fall asleep to it, that's a problem. Like that's that's just terrible, awful bad. Like um, I can imagine you're editing like the entire film going, no, they should have said this. <laughs> no, all I'm thinking is how the hell are you like, I've written screenplays. I've written, I've written shit. Like how the hell is this on TV? And something I wrote isn't like, I, I just didn't get it. Yeah. Um, in fact, how is anything else in the world not on TV when this is, that's how bad they are. The wedding them, feels but- the wedding no, they've gotten a lot better. Going. I've yeah. seen a couple of Hallmark. I mean, Hallmark has really, I think, stepped up. Like they are, they are surpassing Lifetime. Lifetime is so ridiculous right now. Oh, it's yeah. like they have a I whole agree. series of it was deadly or something like deadly this, deadly cheerleader, deadly corkscrew. I mean, just everything was deadly. It's like this whole weird series of like <laughs> ridiculous deadly things. Or I don't know. They, they're <laughs> also doing the BC so Andrews bad. book series, which are okay, but but not. Yeah, they're I like the flowers I like in the, the books, but yeah, like I like I like yeah. that. But but the way they do the uh, the 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 screen the writing is just questionable. But yeah, Wedding Veil series I I actually really liked. I rewatched the third one because I thought that guy was really hot, and he's from Cal he's from Calgary. He's, yeah, I'm like I need to go out in the city more. <laughs> They've all probably moved away to like. <laughs> That's the lady who doesn't want to be in a relationship and get married. No, I don't. But the, I have companions. Like, you know, I, I'm always open to people being potential companions for a time. So. Companion is so romantic. <laughs> it is because it's like we don't entangle each other's lives. Like, that's, I want to remain untangled. So it's perfect. 
I mean, it's not perfect, but it's perfect, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Again, like I said, romantic. <laughs> I don't want any entanglements. I don't want any vulnerabilities. I don't want anybody. No, you can be vulnerable. You can be vulnerable in a companionship situation, especially when you've been companions for six years. Like, okay. You okay. do. There, there is a, that's the thing companionship I've learned that there the level of intimacy like I've had I've been more intimate with companions than I've been with people I've dated mm-hmm. because you're there's you're not trying to you're not trying to please the other person you're both living your life and then you're and then, then you meet and you talk about it and you you know you have adventures and whatnot but you're I'm not like oh I have to be like this because that person wants me to like there's no there's no pressure so actually I'm just completely myself and talk about everything like there there is and that takes time and it's usually accidental that that happens because it wasn't the intention but you do reach a certain level of intimacy that I never experienced in a dating relationship prior so you know it's possible Sounds like a good marriage to me that's what a good marriage <sighs> except is. without having to be married because i don't want to live with anybody so you know separate no, but yeah that's all i'm saying though <laughs> is like whether you call yeah. it partnership companionship or whatever i mean if it when it works it's when you can be yourself and when you don't feel like yeah. you have to yeah. make concessions about who you are for that person yeah. but i just don't want to i just don't want the paperwork or the legal stuff yeah. or the you know like that stuff mm-hmm. uh, you know I, I, i'm open-minded to it once but not, not now so mm-hmm. you know Person. there's a misconception about that anyway yeah. To, what to are we talking what about? Said, <laughs> to what you just said, Tristan, regarding, you know, you, you want to be, you can be yourself. You can, you know, be comfortable in this relationship. Do you feel that that translates the same way to like relationships as like friendships? Yes, I do. I mean, it's, it's equally important to be respectful of the person. And I think there's also, um, you know, people, people date and date and date for whatever. They meet a whole bunch of people, maybe someday finding the person they want to be with for a very long time. Usually not. And I don't think friendships are any different. I think you um, meet friends along the way at different times of your life and they, they can't possibly all be meant to last. Something is going to end that friendship, whether it's some stupid argument or someone moves, or someone has a kid, or someone gets a new job, or someone develops a different interest, someone gets a boyfriend and is obsessed with the boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. Um, So sometimes I think people think a friendship ends because someone has kids, but I think the kids are just one of many things that could have happened that is a change in that person's life that probably would have ended the friendship anyway. That same person might have moved or done anything else in the friendship still would have ended because whatever that friendship was, wasn't interesting enough, frankly, to both of the people involved to, to stay bonded once the thing they had in common dissolved. Um, it's, it's like when people deploy to war, there'll be people who, you know, go to Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever it is they're sent and then the relationship will end and they'll blame it on the deployment because, oh, no, we were far apart and it was so stressful. And and any kind of distance, I think, to blame a distance on the breakup of any kind of relationship is unfair. I, the friendship or the relationship just wasn't strong. That's all there is to it. If it if you have that connection, there's n- seriously nothing that can um, sever it completely. I also feel bad. I, I don't feel bad anymore for saying if you have to call me every week, weekend with your problems, don't like <laughs> because I, I like I, I, and it depends on on the person I realize because I have never been one that that had to surround myself with people. You know, I've, I'm a social butterfly. I have friends in different circles, different spaces. But ultimately, I like to be by myself like I I'm, I can provide emotional support you know, like, I feel like I do that in my daily life now in the child-free space, but, but, you know, I tend to be really good. Like my closest friends are all independent people like me. Like we can handle our shit. There's times where we have to get on a text thread and talk about stuff. And we do, but generally like I've, I've, I've never been friends with people that are like super needy because that's just, that's not my style. They don't get if anyone's ever tried that, they don't get a response from me that they're seeking. Cause I'm not a yes person. I'm not a, I'll solve everything for you kind of person. So I don't, I guess I don't attract that kind of friendship, but I've never wanted to hang out with a group of people all the time anyway. So 
but but I know people that that's their experience. They're just used to being in constant contact with someone all of the time. I guess for me, like my brother and I are that way. Although we go three days at a time without speaking, but we we check in with each other, you know. Um, but we have two very different lives and don't live in the same city and and rarely actually see each other. So, you know, it it's. I guess it really depends. Like if you're not good being solo, then that, I think that would sting more. It's just, I'm coming from the the perspective of, I like flying solo. So it it's, yeah, like you do miss people. And sometimes I, I think about, you know, the, the kind of uh, like the time where we would hang, I would see people more and, you know, I would go over to someone's house and we'd hang out and all that sort of thing. And it was fun. But also I recognize that that's not what I need now from conversations with friends. Like it's, it's changed. What I need is, is like my interactions with people has changed a lot. It's evolved a lot. You know, I'm not really good with small talk unless we're talking Hallmark films. Like, you know, I, I need to go, like, we sit down and we figure out stuff like life. Like that's what I like to do. So, and that's the kind of conversation I need or no conversation at all. It's really hard for me to find like a middle ground. So yeah, the older I get, the more picky I get, I guess. (laughs) I'm like, this is what I need. If I can't get it, I'll find it elsewhere or make it myself. Yeah, I don't, I've never been one to also like you to, I mean, I know Laura just said it specifically. I'm assuming that Kristen's the same, but you like need to be in touch constantly with your friends, like all the time, every day, let's take each other, let's take tell each other, yeah. Like I feel, Kristen just made this. If you're not watching, please go and see Kristen. Do <laughs> you feel a little bit like you can't breathe? Um, mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit overwhelmed as well. I mean, we have like a not a word, but like a, a sort of like an expression for that in Spanish, and it's when you have an excess of coexistence, basically. <laughs> so when I say that I'm excessively co, like I feel an excess of coexistence between of us, then I need to like let's not talk for a little bit. That's fine. And I usually, like, I sometimes feel that with my family. I sometimes feel that with my boyfriend. Like, it's, for me, it's easy to slip into that mode because I'm, I really like being alone, like Lenora. And so I feel that also my friendships are not, I don't, I don't need them to be, like, totally intense in terms of time or, like, let's do all this time to think together. I can even have friends, like, one of my closest friends, and you just reminded me, um, Kristen, when you were talking about your friend, we met when we were like 10 or 11 years old. She thought she wasn't going to have children when she was young. She was the one who was child free when she was young, <laughs> without knowing the term child free. Uh, and then at some point she met this guy, um, fell in love, decided they want to have children. They had a couple of kids. She lives in France. He's French. Um, and so we still talk, but we don't talk all the time. We, I think we sort of like send each other messages on our birthdays and then Christmas and then some other time, are you okay? You know, hard things at your house because we all, we know our families. She knows my family. I know her family. We're, you know, we're friends for a long time. And she's the only friend that I have who's a mother who gets excited about everything that I'm doing now. Like she's like, tell me about your life. It's so fucking cool. Like I want to hear about all your adventures. I have a boring life. I'm a mom. Tell me about yours. You know, like she's, she literally says that to me and she gets so excited and she's like, it's so cool that you did that. When I told her about when I tied my tubes, when I got my tube tied, she was like, that is so fucking cool. I love it. If that's what you want it for you. Like, she's the only friend who I feel is a hundred percent on my side. The only one out of God knows how many I've had. Um, so I, I feel that if friendships are meant to be like Kristen said, they will be. They will evolve, even if there are kids or no kids or whatever happens, but they will, they will evolve, but they will remain strong and relevant, I guess, in our lives. Uh, and if not, then, you know, I've broken up with friends who are child free themselves for different reasons. Like it, being a mother or not in the end really has nothing to do with the fact that some friendships are meant to just not be. 
totally agree with that. And it, it, I like that point you bring up because even when it comes to dating, people think, okay, like the biggest qualification is they have to be child free. Well, you can meet a child free person, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're meant to be like that. That can be a, a starting point. Like it, it's an important part for like how I view it. Very important. I don't ever want to be involved with anyone that has kids. I've tried that. It doesn't work for me, but but just because a person's child free, that's not an automatic. Oh, <laughs> there's good potential here. So actually we can go to the second question now is how do you find child free friends? How, do you, do you try to find child free friends? Like wh what is that? How does a person do that? I mean, we all have different answers and, and maybe to some people listening or watching this, does it, does it matter? Do you need, do you feel like you have to find child free friends? Cause maybe some people don't, I think we assume that we need to find child free people in in like a close friendship situation but maybe we don't so what are you guys' thoughts i wouldn't begin to know what to do uh if i were on a hunt for a child free friend i think i'd probably you know there are child free networking things on facebook for sure where people say hey where do you live where do you live you know and then when they find out they live close to each other they find a way to meet that's the only advice i have is just use the crap out of social media yeah I've had people send me their phone number and I just haven't responded because I don't, I don't mind saying where I live, but I also say that with a disclaimer, like I don't hang out. I'm not a hangout girl. And rarely like the, yeah, there was a couple times where I was like, I didn't even respond because I didn't, I didn't want to be rude. It's just, you know, if I accept someone's phone number, like I, I, I don't give out my phone number. I don't publish my last name. Like, you know, I kind of disguise my appearance a little bit. Like I, I want to remain anonymous, but public online, you know what I mean? So I know there are a lot of child-free people online who actually live in my city, but I'm not the, like, unless we just naturally develop a relationship. Like if you've, you know, we're in the same spaces, like, I don't know, morning chat, or you're part of the convention, or we just kind of naturally get to know one another online. And I feel comfortable. Like if either of you came to my city, of course I would, you know, meet you. I would let you stay in my house. So, you know, but there's been time and trust with that. I just don't randomly go and meet people or you know, take that initiative because that's, that's, I'm busy. And also I just don't want to do it. Like, it's just not, I don't feel compelled to. And that's, that's just me. And I, you know, I, I don't feel bad about it. That's just my style. So if you have sent me your phone number, well, first of all, I'm also locked out of that Instagram account, whereas some of you have sent me my phone, your phone number, so I can't get it. But also <laughs> I, I just, I just don't, reply to that because I, I I'm trying to be as polite as possible but I just don't I don't hang out so yeah yeah I don't I like making new friends even if it's not meant to be like this very close friendship you know afterwards you never know but I do like connecting with people from different backgrounds and different stories and you know specifically childhood people I feel like you said um I can't remember now if it was Lenore or Kristen who said this I think it was as long as it wasn't Tom, <laughs> Tommy, um, you know, like he's like you said, you have to find something other than the child free thing to connect with someone, right? Like you can't just yeah. connect based like we're child free, okay? That immediately means that we're gonna like get along. No, and that is goes for both relationships, like romantic relationships, and also friendships. So I try to meet people in places or doing things that I'm also interested in doing. And then sometimes you get to meet people who are child free there too. So I'm taking a photography, a photography course right now, for example, and there are a few people in that course who are not mothers. I don't know if they're not mothers or by choice or chance who haven't gotten that far, but at least I know that we have other things to talk about. Um, when I did the, the trip that I talked about that I, I just got back from, it was it's also an opportunity to connect with our other childhood women, but at the same time, we're sharing the love that I have for traveling and going to new places and exploring, um, which I, I thought was, and you know, was something that was very interesting in this experience specifically was that when you start talking to people, of course, you don't, you meet them and then you're, you're not opening up about your life the second you meet them. It's, it's sort of- you don't? Like, oh, that's my <laughs> problem. Okay. <laughs> You don't. It's sort of gradual thing, right? <laughs> oh, I'm and taking notes. Okay. Time goes by and it didn't take very long 
because we were together all the time during five days, we start finding things that we have in common and not only things that we have in common, but also things that we can help each other out with. And so this, this sort of like connection develops that is, is beyond, we don't have any kids, right? And that, that's not the one thing that's connecting us. Um, actually, we didn't actually talk about being child-free a lot. It was really interesting. We had a lot of conversations about everything else except child freedom. And of course, children are not part of the conversation, obviously. So it's really interesting to explore other people's feelings and thoughts about things that are important to you, that you're passionate about. Kristen's idea about going to groups on Facebook is great. But like, I, I also try to be in groups that I feel align with my values. That's one thing that I find very important. And also groups that maybe groups that are themed. So for example, there's like a child-free travelers groups or child-free photography group or whatever, you know, you try to find another thing that you can connect with people other than the fact that you don't want to have children. I know that there's a couple of apps that have come out um, for people to find friends. I know Bumble has like a, you can like find like a BFF Bumble, like you can like swipe right for a friend in your area, which I find it's very cute. People use it, yeah. yeah I haven't tried it yeah. myself, but I've heard a lot of people using it and saying that it works. And there are some other apps I read about. I can't remember the name right now for the life of me. Uh, but if you Google app to make friends, there's the story of this girl who um, she used Tinder. So she put her um, gender as male. And in her description, what she did was like, I'm just like trying to find friends to like hang out this weekend. And she actually like swiped right and she got a lot of swipes and like started, got, started talking to women in her area who also wanted friends. And that's when the idea came about that she be, actually created a whole different app just to find friends. I don't um, remember the name, but if you Google it, it exists. Um, and also like there are several, I mean, I've posted on my, on the Uprising Spark. I usually do a monthly post of where are you now? Like lo put your location here if you want each other friends. And people do connect there like I've gotten a few messages with people saying oh you know I met this person because we got to comment here we're from the same area we met in real life we had a coffee thank you so much you know to open the space for this because it's hard but as Kristen said I don't think I mean I think that we can also find friends who are not child free um, and also connect with these people right if they're willing to like be work at a friendship and like you can share with them other different things and passions, then they don't need to be child free. I agree with that. I've been uh, networking with other podcasters who are parents because, you know, you're in podcasting space and talking about things and they're talking about subjects that I can totally relate to are interested in. And I say, well, you know, I've got child free girls podcast. So they are aware that I'm, you know, openly child free, but we're talking about other things but they also are supportive I mean that that's the thing I I, I believe in like I like the, uh, having a, a variety of friends from also from different backgrounds different experiences because then you know, well that's how you learn from you know learn things but I'm actually gonna do somewhat of a social experiment for myself personally because uh COVID mandates are lifting we no longer have to show passports here in my province apparently masks are coming off next month now i've got very glittery sparkly rhinestone masks i will still wear them to certain places because i still believe in that um but there's you know uh li restrictions on on um capacity and stuff are being lifted and plus i can walk better now the ankles like you know 80 percent healed still can't wear high heels but you know i can i can walk fairly decent now so i'm gonna once the snow is like mostly gone and I don't have to bundle up I'm going to go out and go to these places where you know like we've got museums we've got tons of stuff in the city that I've actually ignored for the last decade that I've lived here and some places are now doing free admission not that that means much but like that's a big concern but you know it's just just people going out again especially because we've, we've been pretty restricted here so I was like I'm going to do that I'm just I'm just solo just going to go out random times now mind you I like going out during the daytime so that might weed out a lot of people but I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go out and see who I meet if I meet anybody at all and by meeting I'm just like just people you know just to see who's out because I normally don't do that like I'll go to the theater that's 18 plus right on to see kids and whatever but I'm gonna go out to different places just 
because I've never done that. And I'm like, oh, we'll just try it. See what happens just for fun. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try that. And I won't be a wig. It'll just be my normal appearance. (laughs) Isabel, I think what you said about how you and all the other child-free women didn't talk much about being child-free. I think that's um, one of the kind of things that child-free people look for and friends for a reason is because I don't know what the hell that sentence was. That was a really poorly constructed sentence. (laughs) So like a lot of child-free people aren't friends with parents, certain kinds of parents, because those parents don't uh, know what to talk about besides their kids, which I can understand uh, because that's your life. That's what you're doing. Um, So child-free people tend to gravitate toward other child-free people or parents with older kids or parents who have a more hands-off approach because they do talk about things besides kids and stuff they're interested in besides kids and, and mothering and all that stuff. So yeah, besides what are two people, what are two child free people going to say about being child free anyway? Like, so pretty cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and people ask like people who don't. Okay. So non child free people ask me all the time. What do you guys talk about on a podcast? Like, like they don't understand, they don't understand how, like what kind of conversations child-free people have in child-free spaces. They don't understand how you can create so much content. Like there's just no, because there's a lot to talk about, but you're right in that particular setting. Like, cause even in child-free morning chat, we talk about so many things. I mean, we, we get heavy. We talk about race. We talk about sexuality. We talk about, we talk about movies. We talk about many, many, many things. People you know, need to vent about things or have questions. Sometimes it's very child-free centric. Like we're talking about a specific topic, but it's every single weekday morning. So, you know, people are in various parts of the world and some, some of us are just waking up like me and some people are at work and, and sometimes like we'll go for days without actually talking specifically about child free. We're just talking about life and the things that we experience. And the first, the, the thing that brings people together, it's the fact that we don't have kids. And like I said, sometimes someone has a question or a concern or an issue that they're wanting to work through that is child-free related, whether it's a bingo or they don't know how to deal with a certain thing, whatever it is, you know, we do talk about it, but, but people, people are curious, like, well, what do you talk about? Like, how do you do a podcast and talk about child-free? And what we do, I'm like, I don't even know how to answer that question. There's always something to discuss, but when friend like if we were if the three of us when the three of us eventually meet in real life yeah we won't be sitting around talking about oh how great is it to be child i mean we do this now <laughs> but <laughs> i don't know we, we won't talk about any we probably won't even talk about the podcast like we'll just i don't know talk or not we might just go to our separate rooms and text each other <laughs> that might happen too um that's a good possibility <laughs> but anyway i don't know do you guys think about that Speaking of child-free friends, like if, what, if, when, when somewhere in time we actually meet in person, do you ever think about that? Like, I think like, that's just weird because yeah. it's, you know, there are I mean, physical people in front of you. Yeah, I do. I can tell that none of you are huggers, for example. None of us are what? Huggers. Oh yeah. But, but there's, I, I would hug both of you though, because this is, we've been doing this a long time and you guys are a part of my life. So I can't like, no, I would hug you. I was forced into adopting hugging over time by people who just do it all the time. So now it's like a reflex. <laughs> what? Like back off. Don't touch me. <laughs> no, like at first I didn't know, you know, cause in Germany it was more of a handshake thing. There was no right. hugging. And then I, you know, so I come to the States at, um, 2019 2021 and there's all this hugging happening i'm just like oh okay the only thing i will not do is that that i hate oh hate air kissing air kissing so much it makes me so uncomfortable it's so fake like i just hate it i don't get it no we're we're this is not hollywood we don't air kiss here we do that here all the time that's normal oh really oh so we have to watch out for isabel yeah we'll be like you can hug us and that's it (laughs) That's you so- ear kiss me. I'm going to plant a big wet one right on your cheek. I'm going to make it real. <laughs> oh, you're going for the cheek? Okay. I was going to be a little more direct, but whatever. Okay. That's just, that's just me. <laughs> At least we know it's going to be fun. 
However, yeah. and, and <laughs> those of you who have been listening and watching us for a long time, we're definitely <laughs> going to do it sometime, like as in meet in real life. Yeah. We're going to try and do like a live episode or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we would have, that would be so much fun. Oh, that'd Just be like, great. Yeah. That'd be cool. That would be awesome. <laughs> we we would yeah we would just be yeah that would be that would be that would yeah. be a great time people would be so I excited have to insist that it involves alcohol i just have to, i mean the real the the live record the the recording of us oh. all together i think we would have to have wine or something it would have to be like a slumber party like we're just hanging out in our pajamas and like in a circle <laughs> and talking about whatever <laughs> um i have a feeling we would all have very different styles of pajamas well, I'd have to go buy pajamas first of all. So yeah. <laughs> well, you don't wear what you usually wear to bed. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, we're close, but not that close. Um, <laughs> don't you have like? I don't mean sleeping pajamas. Like, it's I can't imagine sleeping in pajamas. That's just too many clothes. But surely you have something you walk around the house in that's just like sloppy comfortable. Yeah, yeah but it doesn't cover a heck of a lot. No. You never have pants. so like you just put your naked parts all over your furniture. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. I live alone. I can do that. <laughs> I, I I would be sufficiently covered when we hang out. Don't worry. Unless, uh, but but then I would not have to have alcohol though, because that wouldn't last very long. I'll have like that much red wine, like a little bit, a little bit, and then we're good. Um, I was also going to say, were you implying that you need to drink in order to meet us specifically, or it was just the episode? No, no, just because it would be like a really interesting show if we were all a little bit looser. Oh yeah, no, I totally are. agree. Like, wow, what would happen then? We would just be laughing. One of us would Probably. set the other person off, which would set the other person off, and we would just say nothing. We would just be laughing the entire time. I'm pretty sure. Which would be great. I mean, it's the, the epitome of child-free friends. You meet online create a podcast and then you eventually meet you know and then 50 years we still do this so you know. <laughs> no pressure but uh, that's just uh, what i envisioned in my head so well that is it for this episode thank you very much for watching and or listening you can find us on our website at childfreegirls.com you can send us an email with your questions comments uh episode suggestions to childfreegirls at gmail.com and oh, we also have a merch shop. So please check out that out on our website. And you can find us all over social media, most active on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Child for Girls. We're also on Amazon. We have a book called Child for Girls Comfort Food for God, the one that we look right behind Lenora. You can find us on Amazon, on paperback, or Kindle. You can also find us on uh, Clubhouse. We have a Child Free Club that has weeks uh sorry rooms every single day of the week lenora is most active there she's the fun one in <laughs> clubhouse so i talk <laughs> talks um yeah check that out if you're interested in meeting more choppy people first on clubhouse for example it's a really good vibe we also have a new feature called Dear Child Free Girls. Uh, it's an advice column. Each of us answers the question that is posed to us. Uh, we answer it separately, not as a, as a unit. So you get three different perspectives. If you do have any questions, email us at childfreegirls at, at gmail.com and put in the subject line, Dear Child Free Girls, so we know that you understand that this letter will very likely be published on our website or included in our newsletter. Also know that you can choose to be anonymous if you want to, or you can just use a first name, whatever. We don't know it. The whole world doesn't have to know who you are, but we do encourage you to write because um, I think there are a lot of questions or issues people want some sort of feedback on that other people are also wondering about. So your question could benefit not only you, but anyone else who has the same question or, or desire for feedback in general. Uh, our question for today's episode is what has been your experience with friendships as, as you've gotten older and as your friends have gotten older and as um, some of them might have decided to have children? Have they been maintained? Has it been difficult to maintain? Have you found it pretty easy? Any details you want to include, email us at childforgirls at gmail.com or comment below. And don't forget to hit Here. subscribe. 
Yes, and please don't forget to hit subscribe. If you have read Child Free Girls Comfort Food for Thought and enjoyed it, please leave a review on Amazon. It's really good for algorithms. And I'm just going to toss in that if you've read The Age of the Child and you'd like to leave a review on Amazon there too, I would so appreciate it forever. And I'll never forget you ever. That's all. <laughs> don't forget to tune in in a couple of weeks for our newest episode. Bye. 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 Bye.